Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. When I was a teenager, I remember the excitement of Silly Putty quite fondly, both playing with and eating it. After a lot of experimentation, I found out that the Fart Putty was the tastiest. But how could I possibly learn that information without trying it first? What I think I'm trying to say in sort of a roundabout kind of approach is that I think my spirit of experimentation still lives on to this day. And with that, what's more experimental than pushing film to its limits? Like Portra 800, you've probably heard of it. Or maybe you've blocked it from your short and long-term memory because you've done extensive hypnotherapy or just a ton of fun drugs in an effort to just forget that crazy ass price. Port 8 is the fastest film stock in the famous Portra line and is considered a premium film stock for professionals. It's very common in uh, wedding photography just like stress and anxiety. It's easy to figure out why wedding and engagement photographers like this film stock. Warm, pastel tones, not too much grain, and it performs well in low light. What more can you really ask for? I mean, you, I guess you can ask Kodak not to discontinue it. There is kind of some additional buzz online about how Porti 8 is actually based off of a Vision 2 Cine film stock, which kind of makes sense actually. 800 ISO is actually a very fast ISO for film photography in the modern era. Back in the day, photographers were lucky to have a plethora of fast color negative film options like Konica SRG 3200 and Fuji Natura 1600. But in today's age, can we still get back to 1600 ISO color negative film? Portrait 800 is a very good candidate for this test because of its relative flat profile and good low light sensitivity. But what about its ability to push process effectively? Well, I decided to put it to the test and I grabbed one of my slowest cameras, the X-Pan, and found some evening light to shoot. By pushing Portrait 800 one stop, we're effectively underexposing it one stop, which means we need to set the light meter to 1600. In this case, telling the camera's light meter that it has more sensitive film in it than it actually does. So you're lying to it, which may create some trust issues between you and your camera down the line, but we don't have time to worry about that right now. Anyway, so there I was at the Golden Shower Gate Memorial Bridge, I think, with my X-Pan hovering somewhere around 5.6 or F8 and 1 1 25th to 1 500th most of the time, and that's kind of the reason some people will push film. If the meter were telling me 1 15th of a second, I not only would tell it to f right off, but I would also strongly consider pushing the roll that I had in the camera one stop, effectively changing that 1 15th of a second to 1 30th, which might alleviate some potential camera shake that might happen from the slow shutter speed. There's gonna be a barge here in a second, um, coming through cargo ship. Standing right next to some toilets. I hope nobody's in there. <laughs> Hear me talking to myself. Here we go, right about there. This shot is severely underexposed, as all film that gets pushed traditionally is. It's only when it's sent to development that chemically your shots get cooked longer, which bumps the overall density of your negative up. But if your negative isn't working with a reasonable amount of information, then it can't actually amplify anything that's not there. It's kind of like steroids in that way. And yeah, just like steroids, my plums instantly shrank when I saw these shots. I'd say this shot is damn near unusable, and a lot of the follow-up shots were also kind of lumps of ass as well. There are potentially a number of variables at work here, huge lighting difference, the photographer sucks, and the meter could have been fooled or potentially even just low on battery. But overall, I would just say, if you do decide to push Port 8 one stop, you gotta be comfortable with the fact that some of your shots might kinda turn out like this, as it clearly did for me. It's unnecessary. <sighs> anyway. 
Anyway, with God clearly ripping some fat vape clouds over the Marin headlands, I took this shot, with this pole here awfully close to violently piercing my ass if I fell backwards. The shot actually works quite well in my opinion. Perhaps the more even subdued lighting is where the method might work best. The colors are pretty vibrant and nothing is demonically underexposed. Because I was simulating 1600 ISO in the camera's meter, it allowed me to use a higher f-stop like f16 for example or so to get the sign here and infinity in focus together in the same shot while still probably hovering around 1 60th of a second. I have actually shot Portra 800 push one stop before and that's what gave me the idea for this video. Most of the shots were taken inside of a dark abandoned building and they pretty much turned out fine. Some were even good by some people's low standards. But there also wasn't a ton of contrast in the light. It was mostly reflected interior light. <clears throat> I mean, I pretty much have to shoot it. Oh yeah. Don't want to lose too many details in the highlights here, but definitely still need shadow info and since we're pushing it boom Gonna be a sailboat crossing here in a sec. Wait for the right moment. And this shot is an interesting one. Not because it's actually interesting, it's just that it looks like Lomo Metropolis, so do whatever you want with that info. It's weird. There is kind of a color cast, actually. It either goes like very blue turquoise or like sometimes inflamed red in the shadows. I don't think pushing color film is generally a good idea for that exact reason, but with modern day technology, anything can be fixed in post. So repeat after me, the mantra of any overworked VFX artist. We can just fix it in post, bro. All good. Okay, oh, there's something in my ass. This is the shot right here uh the only problem is i have eight shots left i guess i take it if it's calling to me right all right fuck it ow this is ow this is really suffering for your art right here all right after taking a dump in the butt can i headed down to the marina to see what's good with all those marine things or whatever is in a marina i don't know fish probably oh yeah there it is that's the shot oh that's beautiful for once i was right about something i like this one the colors are bang on it's got good separation of layers and the bridge support here is framed pretty nicely there aren't any terrible color shifts and the shadows don't fall off into oblivion I do wonder if 48 is actually a true 500 ISO film based off the Vision 2 Cine formula. We can just kind of get away with shooting it at 800 because it's film and it's kind of meant to look like sh** sometimes. But it does bring up a good question. Would shooting this film stock at 1000 ISO instead of 1600 and then push processing it one stop be an improvement? If my results are anything to go by, then yeah, I'd say probably so. You're all good. Don't worry about it.
Here's basically the same shot twice because I'm a total photography hack and I'll never make it in this robust and ever-changing industry. I'm only singling this one out because the lighting later on in the evening was significantly more global and even overall in this one. And the shot looks significantly better because of it. Lastly, grain. You're definitely gonna see it, like this shot. Let's zoom in on the only halfway decent part of this image and yeah, grainier than grain, everyone. Grainier than the diuretic bird seed that my mom puts in her bird feeder so that they take huge dumps on her neighbor's car. Push processing increases the overall contrast of your image quite significantly. So naturally, because of that, we're gonna see much more grain, which you may love or hate. Either way, it's just something you're gonna have to get used to if you're gonna do it. Think of pushing film like pushing a kid out into the world and then having to pretend to like lacrosse for 10 years. But if you're tired of pretending and you want the real deal for your own website, then look no further than today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one website building platform that features the ability to craft your own corner of the internet from the ground up. It's sort of like a choose your own adventure. Start with one of hundreds of professionally designed templates that you can pick from and furnish your new site with Squarespace's intuitive user interface that allows you to build portfolios, blogs, and even member areas. If you've ever had dreams of selling your prints online, Squarespace can be that hub for you with several modules built solely just for e-commerce. And if you run into any snags during the process, you can check out Squarespace's award-winning 24-7 customer support to get you back on track in no time. So what are you waiting for? If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash grainy days. And if you use the code grainy days at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase. All right, I gotta stop this time lapse. There's a seal right there, holy crap. So, does pushing Portra 800 to 1600 work? I'd say so, kind of. These shots aren't terrible. Actually, that's kind of a lie. These shots are pretty bad. I don't really know what to make of it, to be honest with you. There isn't really too much of like an uncontrollable color cast, and personally, I don't really don't mind the grain too much. The stock retains its warm and gooey tones, and it doesn't really stray away too much from the portrait look, just now with some contrast and lots of fuzzy-ass grain. If you're gonna do this process, I'd say probably maybe just shoot it at a thousand, or at least be conscious and protect for the shadows, which may kind of defeat the purpose of this whole thing anyway. So I, I don't know, in the end, do whatever you want. Literally no one cares except like your mom probably. Pushing film doesn't magically suck in more light. So just be prepared for some of your shots to not really work out, except now on a film stock that's basically twice as expensive as other film stocks. I don't know if I'll do this process again, honestly. I think it was worth the experiment and you know, overall it might help you make a more informed decision down the line. Anyway, as per usual, that's all for this one. See you in hell, motherfuckers.